All right, welcome everyone. To the people on Zoom, just settle in. I'm surprised it's Saturday and we have a smaller crowd. Baka yung iba hahabol over lunch. Yeah, so this is episode three of AI for Lunch. Today we're we're just gonna have fun with AI today. No? Um, although I prepared an agenda, I feel that for this episode, the best way to to do it is to actually use AI uh, on live stream. And for those who are in the audience, mamaya, if uh, if uh, time allows, no, may pag may mga special requests kayo, maybe we can do it live. No? Uh, I won't promise we'll be able to discuss everything, though. I'm sure you all have pressing questions uh, when it comes to the use of AI, especially generative AI. But uh, the, the theme for today is how do we actually use AI? Because we already talked about the, the ethics of it, the existential problems, which will make a comeback uh, probably in a future episode. We talked about effects on jobs. Actually, this is a little related to the jobs topic because I'm sure after today, <clears throat> especially if you've, uh, you haven't used AI as much before, um, you'll have ideas on how this could actually affect people's work. No? Alam pala si, uh, si Dean Bokobo. Hi, Dean. Nice to see you. <laughs> Sige, ano lang tayo dito? Chill, no? Uh, Karstein, hi. Good day. Uh, hi, Jenny. Hi, Joriel. Hi, David. Teka lang. Tingnan ko sa Facebook. How many people are watching? No, Just out of curiosity. Uh, two people. Okay, kung sino mang kayo, thank you for watching. I'm sure dadami pa yan later. All right, sige. Let's, uh, let's begin, no? So today's uh, topic is... Uh, AI tools, use cases, and business. We're doing it on a Saturday, uh, para it's more, you know, it's more convenient. I hope, and di tayo ano, uh, occupied by the workday. Obviously, this will eat into your weekend. So, uh, apologies if you are foregoing some important weekend gimmick. But what can be more fun than AI? No, sa totoo lang, <laughs> to be honest. Sige. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me. In case, uh, especially uh, outside the Zoom, uh, my name is uh, Doc Ligot. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur and, uh, well, basically everything I do now is related to AI. No? But uh, I've actually been working in maybe close to close to 25 years no, in, in data. So I started out in financial services and then worked in uh, IT. And then I started uh, two companies. One was a fintech and then the other was a consulting company, which is Serolytics. And then sometime, I don't know if I shared this before, sometime in 2019, we made the hard uh, pivot uh, into social impact. So we, I, I founded Data Ethics PH, I co-founded AAP, and then the COVID pandemic hit right about the time we, we, we won the NASA challenge. No? That's that photo on the upper right uh, for Project ADIS, which I'm happy to just plug, uh, is a, was a finalist in the Geospatial Innovation Awards. So we got a high commendation, which I think, is good enough for me, no? Uh, good enough for us. Uh, we we continue to try to push the envelope in terms of the use of AI, particularly in, in public health. Basically, ibuhat ang bandera ng Pilipinas, no? Uh, as far as that's concerned. And the, the point there is, hopefully, we inspire others to do the same. So this series of webinars, completely free. And by the way, uh, I added uh, Creative Commons sa baba, no, in case you guys are wondering. You're free to reuse all of this material yourselves. No? If you want to share it to schools, you share it to uh, you know, a broader audience. Mamaya, I'll have a call for anyone who wants parang a one-hour briefing on AI. Uh, I just did one in Globe Telecom yesterday. Uh, it went very well. Because uh, I think we need to spread awareness. So that's really the point of doing all of this. I call it AI for lunch because I have nothing better to call it. So it's over noontime. Uh, I want to really spur discussion about adopting AI. The interesting thing, especially from the last episode, I've noticed uh, it's like all the all the hype around AI seems to be negative hype, which is weird. Uh, but in a way, it's also encouraging because in, in prior tech uh, trends, like uh, blockchain, metaverse, you name it, even data science, the hype was so positive. And then what normally happens after a lot of positive hype is there's a crash, meaning people get disappointed. So now AI starting out, the hype is negative. 
So baka it's the opposite. No? AI actually ends up being the legit technology of the fourth industrial revolution, which I also believe. Um, I want to definitely al uh, address alarmist claims. So let's just be realistic about this, both good and bad. So we've talked a lot about the bad. Let's talk about the potential good. Naman. Uh, this is also an 18,000 feet view. So uh, I've mixed material from references. I'll have links naman, uh, posted on the page. But definitely, this is mixed with my personal views. No? So you know, just as, a, just as a, a heads up. Dean, you want to mention something? You, I, I noticed you unmute. You want to you wanna say something? Yeah, I'm kind of new to the lunch uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, welcome but, uh, aboard. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. I, I uh, well, you know, Dom, Dom and I uh, are recent acquaintances, but uh, parang it's love at first sight, you know. <laughs> Totoong love yan. Uh, and I must say, uh, our team from La Salle did lose to him in the first NASA challenge that they won. <laughs> so I got a salute. <laughs> salute to you. Nina man, Nina man. Uh, it's, it's been a good, uh, a good. Uh, it's been a good um, relationship, and and I'm hoping that uh, especially now with AI. Um, I'm just excited, uh, like you, Dom, uh, Doc. I, I really, I, I think this is wonderful, and 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 I've been observing uh, your your hyperactivity in this area the last couple of months. I I need to really uh, salute it and I, I appreciate you a lot. I I think uh, people uh, don't realize how uh, golden an opportunity it is that that um, that you're bringing to the table for our country. Uh, I mean, th this is a chance for us to leapfrog uh, past some of the some of the problems that we've had, and 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 I, I think a lot of people do appreciate you. I do certainly. So I, I hope to to help out, become part of your merry band here. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dean. Looking <laughs> forward to it. Happen, so. Actually, trivia lang yung group ni Dean were also in the NASA Space Apps in 2019, and they had a proposal for smart cities, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. We baka pwede natin buhayin yan later, Dean. No, after all of this. No? Uh, I also see Agile Geek in the audience. Uh, shout out. So yeah, I owe I owe my because I've been out of Facebook, quanting digression lang, for 12 years because of privacy. And then recently, because of AI, I decided to come back to basically help spread the word. So I'm very thankful to people like ayan, si Agile Geek, si Kuya Dev, if he's out there watching. Uh, and they're really helping me spread the word. So, uh, sana kayo din, if you're on Facebook, mamaya I'll have a call out. Please share this stuff freely. It's also uploaded on YouTube. And then, uh, believe it or not, nasa TikTok na rin ako. No? I'll see what I can do about that. <laughs> All right, sige. So, let's get to it. Um, normally, I, uh, you know, I uh, do a little bit of data visualization on everyone who registered. It's also good, ano, parang insight. No? So, so far... Ito yung mga, there is a survey question. What area interests you the most? And not, not a surprise, chatbots is number one. But interestingly, task and workflow automation is uh, second. Uh, for those who are interested in that, you, you, you might be in for a treat because some of the AI tools that I'll play with later uh, have to do with tasks, particularly planning. No? Surprisingly, planning is uh, although it's not number one here, planning is an area where chatbots can really bring a lot of ano, uh, a lot of value. Uh, and of course, the other parts here, like monitoring, images, these are like the classical use cases for analytics. Basically, anything you can use analytics for, you can use AI for. In fact, those two are sometimes conflated. But mamaya, I'll explain. Uh, all, all, also, as a member of AAP, we've been discussing this internally. Ano ba yung difference between AI and analytics? And... Uh, well, the emerging view, at least for me, is they're flip sides of the same thing. There are times when you use AI, there are times when you use analytics. Uh, so it'll be interesting to, to discuss that, Mami. I'll show you a, a shorthand on it. Sige. So the agenda, simply lang. I will first spend the first few, I don't know, maybe almost half an, uh, half an hour, maybe, or 20 minutes, just doing prompting. Because I noticed uh, people who are uh, usually new to chat GPT, they tend have a tendency you know, to use it, I would say, in the wrong way. You know? uh, right or wrong. Or maybe in a more in a less reliable way, probably is the best way. So I wanted to maybe show you how I use ChatGPT and uh, some similar tools, and then later see if uh, you guys agree. You know? And then I'll dive into some other tools other than ChatGPT. You might find them interesting. Mapapansin nyo, when we discuss the, the other tools, they're actually just a, ano, parang applications that sit on top of 
either ChatGPT or the base model of GPTs or the image generation tools. So ganyan ang ano, I think if if you zoom out, there I think there are three areas of I would say development happening. Yung of course the the foundation level is where everyone's talking about like GPT-3, GPT-4. Uh, usually this is limited to kind of the companies who are monopolizing quote unquote the, the AI space yet sina DeepMind, OpenAI, Anthropic, Stability. The reason being, it takes a lot of infrastructure and, and which costs a lot, no? if you're, especially if you're using cloud, to train these models. There are some smaller language models, but they're not as reliable, but, which you can probably do on a laptop. But for the foundation models, the development, yan, these are really the big companies. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be keen to compete with them on that. I mean, I can't spend as much money as they, they can. Not even our big companies here, baka they, might, ano, they might struggle. Although when I was with Globe yesterday, I told them, if there are companies that should be leading the charge, John, it should be like people like Globe Telecom who have massive infrastructure. Uh, pero yan, mm -hmm. that's something to be discussed. Pa. The next level is the application level. So that's where ChatGPT sits. So GPT and ChatGPT are not the same thing. G GPT is the, the foundation model. So ChatGPT is an application that allows you to talk to that model. And my API is already provided by OpenAI and the other providers. You can now build basically programs on it. So most of the, all of the tools we'll see today are at this level, kind of uh, you know, using applications. Then there's an, a higher level, which actually I think most people don't realize, where how do you use those applications? And hopefully after today, you'll walk away with at least some idea. Because I can't claim to be comprehensive about it but i hope it 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 you know it uh, forms uh, parang a, a thought starter you know, in how these tools can be used we'll start with some basics like how do you really prompt these machines and then later you'll see how that was leveraged by other developers gumagawa na sila ng mga custom applications which is also in a way a, a challenge to everyone here if you're interested to start a business or interested to start uh you know write some software on top of these applications, you'll you'll find there's a huge opportunity. In fact, there are thousands of tools already. I'm I myself I'm struggling to keep uh, keep tabs on all of them. Fortunately, there are also tools that can help you keep track of them. So mommy, I should share ko yan. So, yeah, so let's get to it. Major prompting 101. By the way, feel free to follow along, although uh, it might get pretty fast because uh, we wanna cover as much ground as possible. No? So first a warning. So ChatGPT is not a search engine. Let's just be clear. Because most people kind of think of it that way. It's not a database. So if you were attending the last webinar, uh, the way it works is it predicts the next word after a series of words. You need to be in GPT. And so whatever ChatGPT spouts out, it may or, actually, may or may not be true. It's just statistically probable. In other words, it's a sentence that looks optically correct but it could be factually wrong. So be, be very careful about it. That's why I, I'm hesitant to use chat GPT like blindly, like you just ask it a question, unless it's a, a fairly common term. No? So I think the, the key difference, although this is still a subject for research, is if you're asking the chatbot about a common noun, like what is, what is the ozone layer? <laughs> Most likely it will tell you what the ozone layer is. Because ozone layer is... Uh, Kind of a common term, but if it's a proper noun like who is uh, Dean Bokobo, <laughs> or more recently who is Ben Tehanki, you know, actually that's the best example. No? I don't know if you caught this on on my social media. So see, Doctor Tehanki, who's a good friend of mine, a mentor as well. He's a professor of uh, para, ano, business ethics sa Lasal. He was attending an event. This is really a, a cautionary tale, and ang nangyare. Uh, of course, occupational hazard, Dr. Tehanki's CV is quite uh, prolific. Daming naman. And the organizers were trying to be, from my understanding, were trying to be clever. So instead of using the actual CV that he gave, they asked ChatGPT for a shorter CV, which I think is a mistake. No, Because they could have just given the PDF of, uh, of, uh, or the text of the CV as, an, as a prompt and ask ChatGPT to summarize it. Mas maganda sana yun. In fact, that's going to be one of our exercises. But instead, they just ask uh, ChatGPT, please provide a, a five-bullet uh, profile for Dr. Tianqi. And as you might expect, it created a, a, a statistically probable but fake CV. And 
it was a huge embarrassment for Dr. Tehanki, obviously any academic who's particular about credentials. And ang problema dyan, there were thousands of people in that event, online and on the ground. Umalat na yon. And now they had uh, they spent uh, they had to spend time rectifying that after the fact. And I think up to now, galit na galit pa rin si Dr. Tehanki. Although kaibigan niya yung mga the organizers. So I think that's the cautionary tale with these machines. No, let's not treat them like they were a date. They don't retrieve data like a database, or they don't get search results. They they were trained on that data. Pero all of that data, I think another webinar we can do not today will be to dive into a bit of the technicalities no, of how GPT works. Basically, all of that data has been compressed into a small mm -hmm. data set, no, which they call embeddings. No? It's a vector data set. Very abstracted na yung data na yan. And yung prompting is a way of parang telling, oh, the, ano, the algorithm, based on this sentence, can you decode that and add answers? So which, impressively, kaya ng, kaya ng, kaya ng gawin ng, ano, ng chat GPT. That's actually the, the wonder of this technology. You compressed a whole, I don't know, petabytes of data into a small data set, relatively small, like gigabytes na lang. Uh, and it can answer pretty much any question statistically. But when you want to be factual, that's where it fails. So just be careful about that. But with that preamble, let's just dump, uh, jump into what can we do with these uh, I know, machines? Um, in case you were wondering, there were there are many competitors not to chat GPT. I don't have all of them, but these are the top five uh, chatbots that I may use from time to time. There's the chat GPT and chat openai.com. There's Google Bard. There's bing.com uh, slash chat, the bing chat, which you need to use Microsoft Edge uh, for. No? So if you want to use that. Uh, Hugging uh, chat is the, the uh, a more open version of chat GPT. So Hugging Face is an open source nonprofit company. And if you are not a member yet, you should be. You can access many, many types of AI tools there. They, you know, they let you access it for free and you don't need to have any infrastructure. They don't, call, they don't charge you anything. Unlike sa ChatGPT, you have to be a member of ChatGPT. And nowadays, it's getting harder to get a, a, a subscription or a membership. And then if you want to use the professional version, you have to pay. Uh, but for Hugging Face, completely free. Um, you just need to use your Google login or create a unique login. For the others, it's a mix. No? For Bard, uh, we, we'll, we'll use all of them mamaya para makita nyo. Uh, you, have, you need your Google account. Perplexity, you need to sign up. Uh, I like perplexity because uh, I think overall it's relatively the most reliable in terms of uh, facts. I'll show you why, Mamaya. Um, but I still like ChatGPT. So probably perplexity and ChatGPT for me are the kind of the best ones. Uh, hugging face next because of the lack of ano, uh, any constraints, no costs, no logins. And then your Google Bard and Bing, unfortunately, I still find they come up with you know weird results from time to time, but uh, they're getting better now. So Mamea will 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 do that. At the same time, there are also the image generation tools. There are a lot. Mamea, I'll show you a, a new one I found, which I found very reliable. The, the top of the pack, I think, is still mid-journey, uh, which uh, is you need to be on a Discord channel to, to use it. Then Stable Diffusion was one of the earliest to come out publicly. The, orig the first Stable Diffusion is a, basically a software that you download to your laptop. And you know you can run it uh, from it, but I like that they also provided the web version, Stable Diffusion Web, which we'll use later. So you don't need to have any high-tech laptop to do it. Everything will be web-based. Uh, Stability AI also provided a paid uh, upgrade to that, no, which is Dream Studio, which I think is about as good or almost as good as Midjourney. Mamaya makita nyo rin. And then Dali, which is by OpenAI, which is a paid ano, uh, service. I would put the uh, ironically, I would put it at the bottom. You know, uh, sometimes the the images they generate aren't as good. But I think the difference is learning from what happened to Stable Diffusion, which I discussed in the last episode. Stable Diffusion is being sued by Getty Images because of you know some of the copyrighted images that they included in their training data. While in Dali, that doesn't seem to be the case. So OpenAI already made sure to sanitize the data set. But as a result, the images aren't so good. So I think that's the trade-off. No? The nice images are often copyrighted. So you, I guess that's an ongoing discussion with the art community. Next episode, we'll talk about art. I'll, de I'll, I'll delve into that. Uh, I don't know how it will be resolved, uh, to be honest. It's really kind of a trade-off. If you want to uh, 
uh, get uh, good results, you'll have to contend with licensing. So maybe it's something that can be resolved at the foundation level. Doon sila makipag-away on the licenses. Para the users can be more free to come up with creative stuff. So, you know, just be careful when you use proper names of artists, which can be part of a prompt, by the way. Uh, when we start surfing different types of prompts, you'll find that uh, using a particular artist actually is part of the, the process. Uh, whether the artist is dead or alive, siguro yung tanong. No? Like Van Gogh is a very popular uh, prompt in, in many of these image ano, generation tools. So yeah, between these two, dito muna tayo practice no? The chat bots and the image generators. Uh, I just want to show how, how I would use it. And some of the uses of this stuff is fairly mundane. You'll be surprised. But they can be useful. Okay, so let's dive into it. I'll just be freely switching right and left now. So one of the first uh, and most popular uses internally, kahit kami dito sa Serolytics, is just summarizing you know, plain text. You'll be surprised how, ano, <laughs> how useful that is. No? So I'll use itong article ni, ni Aimee uh, about I, uh, Senator Aimee Marcos no, as an example. Wait, let me drop that link here for the people in the Zoom. Uh, give me a second to do it. Um, so this is the article about uh, si Senator Marcos wants to ni naman ban ano ban AI. She just wants uh, parang an inquiry into uh, the effects of AI on the BPO sector particularly. So she's worried about jobs. No, so I'll drop that here in the in the in the chat room. No? So yeah, yan yung article. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna summarize this article. I don't know how many of you actually do this already. So this is the article. IME seeks regulation of artificial intelligence uh, in BPOs. No? And well, kung super tamad kayo, you don't want to read this anymore. You want to, to summarize it. So I'm just going to open. Can you see my screen? I hope hopefully you can. No? So this is chat GPT. Uh, isa natin. This is Google Bard. This is perplexity. And then si hugging chat. Yun na lang muna, just to keep it simple. No? So Okay, so some tips, and I learned this from the, if uh, if you remember the, I mentioned yung, was that deep learning AI course ni, you know, ni Andrew Eng, might as well drop that here. No? Uh, it's called Prompt Engineering for Developers. Okay, and uh, even if you're not a developer, I recommend you take this because uh, it shows you how you can effectively create prompts. And Mamaya, there's actually a guide to, to prompts that I'll be sharing no? So one of the, the tricks I learned is whenever you want a uh, chat GPT or any, you know, any uh, uh, chatbot to deal with uh, text, external text, it's always good to put delimiters. So this is pretty normal for developers. So uh, one of the most effective ones is the, the back, I don't know, back apostrophe, because it's unlikely you're going to use it anywhere else. So you open it with, a, with three back apostrophes, you paste the text and you close it. And then you just say, okay, summarize the above text enclosed into five bullets, something like that. No? And uh, you let the you let the chatbot basically summarize it for you. No? This actually saves me a tons of time. Normally, I spend about an hour every morning reading up on news. Ngayon, I actually have a, a small application that I developed that basically just does this. I drop a piece of text and then yan na, five, five bullets. Now, sometimes if the article is pretty long, there's a chance that the bullets will miss it. No? Uh, but generally, if you're like reading news or you know, summarizing social media, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty useful. So at, I'm using the other chatbots to compare what they say. No? So such chat GPT, Senator Marcos has called for an inquiry. Marcos expressed concerns that AI development is outpacing comprehension. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. BPO industry played a crucial role. A study by Oxford Economics in Cisco predicts that 1.1 million jobs. See, na huli niya pati yung mga things that you would not normally read when you're, you know, when you're speed reading. It's good to have a chatbot doing that for you. And then finally, Marcos emphasizes the need for upskilling. So see, she doesn't want to ban the AI. Yun yung lumi, lum, uh, unikot na, na rumor. All she wants is to see if we can upskill and train the workers and see if uh, we can protect them from, from AI. No? Sabi ni Bard, ganun din, pretty much. Central Marcos called in query, AI is developing faster. Oh, so may iba siyang facts na linabas. In 2020 to 2021, the BPO industry grew by 10%. Okay, and then cited a study, pero hindi na niya binanggit what, 
who created the study, ChatGPT said, uh, who. Perplexity I love because it gives you citations. No? Although they come from the internet, that's the thing. No? But I find this useful because when you're you know, doing quick uh, research, sometimes you don't have time to be Googling stuff right and left. So I like perplexity. Actually, Bard also did that, although not here. No? But perplexity mm -hmm. will always give you like citations from the internet, and then you're free to check those, uh, you know, those stories if they make sense. So see, our original article came from the Philippine News Agency, and then Perplexity gave me a, I know, a, a citation from GMA. Oh, pretty good. No? Uh, what about what happened to Hugging Chat? No, Hugging Chat seems to have hung. <laughs> okay, I'll have to repeat, re uh, reload that, no, and see what I can do about that. Too much traffic. Ayohon, please try again. No, that's the problem with hogging face. Since everyone is there, you may not be able to use it because it's free. Okay, so I don't know if you do that already. It sounds pretty mundane, but actually it's quite useful no? where you, know, you are basically summarizing lots of text. So I hope that works. You can specify how many bullets you want or you can just leave it blank and it will figure out kind of the, the general parang number of bullets to summarize a text, but I always found that pretty useful. Okay, but okay, I'm sure many of you are already doing this, but not this. No? So this is a different type of summarization. Uh, we have a text here. Uh, this is the Amazon walkout. No? And I did the same thing, but I provided a guide, no? parang headings. And I just got kind of the, the basic seven elements of, uh, of story. What's the plot? What's the tone? What's the theme, etc. And this is actually a clue on how you can really efficiently use uh, you know, chatbots like ChatGPT. I said the, the point is, if, you're, if you don't use it as a search engine, but more as a logic engine, it becomes very, very powerful. So let's see how that works. Now. So uh, here's the article. I'm going to drop this again on the Zoom uh, for everyone. So Wired article, Amazon workers walk out over layoffs and broken climate promises. So I'm just going to copy this text again. Haba. Yan pa, nakatamad. Okay. The same technique to the triple back apostrophe. And then my prompt was, I mean, don't, don't worry if you don't get the prompt exactly as I wrote it. The bottom line here is you're giving the chatbot a framework. So I said... From the text above, spacing on Microsoft, provide a summary of the following plot, tone, theme, setting, conflict. You actually you can use any, any series of headings you want. So this is actually great for people who are doing business reports and you don't have time to summarize everything. So run that. I'll also try it on Bard. Let's see if Bard can do it. And perplexity. Do that again. Yeah. Good luck. Hugging chat. If you're alive. Oh, nabuhay siya. Sige. So back to chat GPT. So what happened? Oh, so yeah. So what happened? Amazon corporate employees have staged a walkout. That's the plot. What's the tone? The tone of the text is critical and discontented. This is actually related to a classical analytics use case for you know, sentiment analysis. So this is the sentiment. No? What's the theme? The theme explored in the text includes worker discontent, distrust in leadership, and the impact of corporate decisions on employees' lives. So kinuha niyo yung mga main ideas. What's the setting? Takes place in Seattle, where the Amazon headquarters is located. What's the conflict? The main conflicts are between Amazon's corporate employees and the company's management. Who are the characters? The text mentions several employees who participated in the walkout. And yung si Brad Glasser was the spokesperson. Finally, what's the point of view? The text is written from a third-person perspective, presenting the viewpoints and experiences of the employees involved in the walkout. So see, something it sounds pretty mundane, but for me, this is one of the most reliable uses of uh, these chatbots. You don't ask them directly uh, parang, uh, items of fact. What you do is you give uh, initial text, and there's another app that does this really, really better than what I'm doing now. And then it processes the text using its large language uh, model and then gives you uh, information ba based on that text, which you're sure is correct, or at least you're sure where it came from. 
Oh, to si Bardo. Give you the five bullets and then additional details. And then meron siyang, ano, uh, actually didn't really follow instructions kasi nga, uh, ah, yeah, because the number of texts that I can paste in Bard is smaller than, ano, than chat GPT. So talagang bulok talaga si Bard. They need to improve it. What about perplexity? I wonder if uh, it worked. Um, Wala. Nabobo siya. Still loading. Okay. Finally, in... Uh, ah, Hugging Chat. Oh, Hugging Chat did it as well. No? Plot, tone, theme, setting, pero kulang. No? Right. That, this is the... Ano, this is now how you can compare each chatbot with each other. So far, it's still ChatGPT who's the most reliable. It's able to get as much text as you paste on it. Uh, and then it can follow your instructions to the letter. And then if you're not happy, you can regenerate a response. For the other chatbots, it's either they're using an older model or you know their API is limited. No? Or maybe I need to upgrade. Maybe it's the number of tokens. No? Because this article was a little long. Sige. So so far, so good. ChatGPT, two out of two. Yung iba, bok, yana. Okay, next. Um, I don't know how many times you need to count words. Actually, count anything. So this is a... A rather familiar poem, The Quick Brown Fox Jumps Over the Lazy Dog. Pero may sequel siya. He lands head first on a rotting maple log. Knock unconscious, fox sleeps with shallow breath until lazy dog awakes and worries him to death. So actually, that's not the original poem. It was just a continuation by, ano, by, by Jenny Lee. No? But I, I found this as a very helpful parang example of demonstrating yung word counting ability. Dropping the link on, on Zoom now, no? Um, of, an, of a chatbot. So, mm -hmm. okay, let's let's do that. So, ito, quick brown fox. I'll copy this. Mm -hmm. Back to chat GPT. And then my prompt is, from this text, count the words. So, I also learned this from the the uh, the prompt engineering course. No? You can ask a question and then you can define the result. So please return the result in the form of word colon count. So in a way, it's parang pseudo code or pseudo uh, uh, programming. So susundan niya yun. So how many times did the word dog appear? Dalawa. How many times did the word uh, death appear? Isa. I have a question from Josh. How do we trigger a prompt to continue providing results? If it's actually, I think you can just con uh, ask it to continue. Let's see. Nga. Continue generating. Information. I wonder if that will work. Oh, see, tinuloy niya. So you can literally just tell the GPT. Kunyari na putol. Please continue generating info. In the in I think in the professional version, there's a button and na de detect nila if the prompt was uh or the result was incomplete. So you can just you know just use basically tell these chatbots to just continue doing what they're doing. Or you can say, can you do it again? Can you do this again, but ano ba? Uh, output the results as a table. Oh, yun, table na siya, which is HTML formatted, and then you can paste it on Excel and it will be easier. So, I mean, that's really the cool part about this, uh, parang these technologies. They break down barriers in usage. Because can you imagine if you had to do this through, ano, through, through programming? No, <laughs> what a hassle! No, something as simple as that. Uh, in fact, that's my next example. You can actually, for the developers out there, let's say you found a particular function pretty, uh, no, uh, useful. You can say, can you do rewrite the previous instruction in Python? And so, so let's Python code that will, uh, no, that will output that, uh, uh, no, uh, that output, and then you can test it. Sometimes, pala, the code doesn't work, so you have to test it. But I think. For the most part, I think the the accuracy of the, or at least the the accuracy of the code for me has been nine out of ten. No, ten percent of the time, medyo may mint this. But if you're already a programmer, you would know where to fix it. So, what if you're not a Pythonista? Maybe you're more of a web developer. So you say, "Sige, JavaScript na lang." So ganyan, no? So it comes up with JavaScript. Or maybe you're more of an old school developer like me. No, it's PHP, no? which. Uh, is a programming language that refuses to die. I wonder if we can say assembly. No, sige, wag naman. Uh, Fortran. Yung mga lumang programmer dyan, Fortran. 
<laughs> nakuha niya pati Fortan. <laughs> so, I mean, what why is this a big deal? Well, as people are getting older and the people who know these old programming languages, they're getting older, some of them are dead. So, there's really an opportunity for uh I think younger uh professionals to come in and start using these tools to translate them to newer technologies or technologies that are uh, more more current. So it's not just summarization and you know text uh, text manipulation. Although I found I found the summarization really powerful. Uh, you can bridge the gap between coding and uh, non-coding. Actually, that's a that's a point I wanted to make even in the first episode. Is there's really uh, uh, parang a bias towards coders right now in AI. And that bias will soon fade away. Because now, you don't need to be a programmer per se. You can still write code, actually, but you are now assisted by ChatGPT. O sabi ni Josh, I just learned HTML and CSS in two weeks. Bagal naman. You could have learned it in two days. No, <laughs> just kidding. Pero yun ang ay. Um, you learn by doing. Unlike the traditional way of learning how to program, you have to spend weeks, watch videos, maybe read some books. Eto. You literally do something in plain text or English, and then ask uh, the the chatbot to ano uh, to to rewrite it in in code, and then you transfer it to your coding window and try to figure it out. Okay, so those are like four basic prompting techniques: uh, rewriting code, counting words, summarizing with a framework, or summarizing in general that are useful, no. And I think that takes care, at least for me, that takes care of 80% of the work I have to do na mano mano. And if if you're ano, you're even more uh, uh, parang ano, enterprising, you can you can combine both. You can write code, kanyari, like you know, we have a, a small Python script that actually does all of these prompts automatically. So now you know kind of the underlying, I would say, framework at the second level. I mentioned there's the foundation level. This is on the second level. How do you prompt these foundation models to come up with really cool output? So later, when we go through some of the AI tools that I found interesting, it's all just that. And if you can parang work that out in your mind, what kind of applications can you create? Or can you use these uh, these tools for? No? Yun yung, ano, yung importante. O, dito. I asked ChatGPT to explain the code line by line. No? Actually, dun sa example... Okay, before we go back there, where's that? Ini explain na rin niya eh. Ato, see, meron na siyang meron na siyang comment. So for beginners, you know, it put comment, it puts comments. It, for beginners, it's really useful. So you know, ah, okay, so that's what this join uh command uh does, no? Or what what about this counter command or this tabulate command? Yun pala yun. These are the classes and the functions that are being used. Again, don't take it at face value. You have to audit it and, and check it. But I found that really, really good. Okay, so let's join them in the world of the image generators now. The cool thing that you need to realize is you can also ask ChatGPT to create prompts for you. You know, So in this example, I'll write me four prompts. But it's only what I use. For stable diffusion, to create a background image for my website featuring a cat on a beach. And then funny enough, um, kasi nga, there's so many ways to do prompts. And there's actually a, a website for that. I can uh, I'll show it later. The way it wrote a prompt is it's quite story-like, which is it basically goes beyond what a normal person would do initially. Parang maybe a normal prompt would be, give me a cat on a beach. Pero ito, sinulat talaga niya. Imagine a serene beach scene with a playful cat. The cat is sitting on the warm sand, gazing out at the calm ocean. Talagang story siya. Create an image that captures the peacefulness of the beach and the playful nature of the hat. So I'll paste that that text literally here on the you know here on the zoom. Para you guys can try it out. And let's see what happens now. So yeah. So this is it. That's imagine a serene beach scene with a playful cat. Again. So I've got that prompt. And let's just go to each of the image generators and see what happens. Now. So this is my Discord. Uh, uh, for Mid Journey. So I don't know how many of you are already members. Unfortunately, uh, Mid Journey doesn't accept free, you know, free customers anymore. So you have to pay. Pero mura lang naman, ten dollars. And then the way you prompt Mid Journey is you use the imagine command. No? Imagine. There are two commands, kasi imagine and blend. The imagine is a totally original image 
blend is you upload a, a photo of yourself or something else, and then you can ask uh, Mid Journey to edit it and transform it into something. So I'm just going to put that there. Um, let's see if that works. So yeah, and sending command. While that's waiting, let's look for other. Ato, see Stable Diffusion Playground, StableDiffusionWeb.com. So lalagay ko rin siya dyan. Let's compare all of them. See Dream Studio na rin. Uh, where is that? Dream Studio. Beta.DreamStudio.ai. So I'm just going to put that here. Yeah. Dream. Unless wala na akong pera. Ayan. <laughs> wala na akong pera. Ganun din si Dream Studio. You're, you're supposed to pay. Dolly na rin. Let's do Dolly. Put that there. And then there's a fourth one later that I'll, a fifth one later that I'll, I'll show you. Ayan, sige. So did my journey finish? Ah, there it is. There's my cat. Oh nga, no? Sabi ko naman, it's a background image for my website. Pero mukhang ginawa niyang parang painting of a cat ang labas, no? Kasi I didn't specify naman what kind of art. I can always, could always have said, do it in watercolor, do it in 3D, do it as Van Gogh, stable diffusion. Ito medyo, medyo may mga weird cats. Medyo wangi yung kanilang ano, mga mata. But otherwise, you know, it's pretty decent. So this is like pseudo-photographic. -photogra you can specify pa nga in the prompt, like use uh, Fuji camera, this brand, this lens. I mean, if you're a photography buff, you can put that in. What about Dream Studio? Ah, Dream Studio, medyo ano, cartoony. I like this. Oh, nice. What about Dolly? Dolly did not load. Ayan na. It's now loading. Ah, okay. Mala stable diffusion din siya. Pseudo photographic, although it looks weird. Oh, yeah, medyo garbled. <laughs> weird siya. But you can always do variations, no? Although I don't know if I still have credits, no? Yan. So, so that prompt was generated by ChatGPT. No? What if I do another prompt completely, ano, completely, uh, completely blind? No? Okay. Write me a prompt for mid journey na lang, mid journey of a realistic cyberpunk scene featuring Filipino, traditional Filipino outfits. Na natin yan. Traditional Filipino. Outfits. Cyberpunk traditional Filipino. Oh, kung ang gagawin niya. Let's see if this works. Ang oh, haba naman ng prompt niya. Uh -huh. Anyway, sige. Let's see. Weird minsan eh. Actually, I don't know if you're familiar with how they created uh, you know, image generation tools like Midjourney. No? Uh, well, it's based on a technology called diffusion modeling where you get an image, you, you turn it into a very fuzzy image, and then you, that's the encoding, and then you have a decoder that converts that fuzzy image back into the original image. And then depending on your prompts, it will blend no? multiple other fuzzy images para pag bumalik siya into the high definition image, it's a combination na. It's a really cool, uh, ano, um, it's a really cool method. Now, how did they know the prompts? It, they actually use two types of AI. There's an AI, I think that was developed by OpenAI, that was trained to label images. And then there's another AI naman that they developed to convert that label into an image. And then they ran those two models again and again and again. Parang they played against them, parang ano, adversarial uh, process. So that the prompts now become so, uh, ano, so accurate. So sige, let's, let's try my journey, see if it will accept this. No? Imagine that. Try na rin natin si Stable Diffusion Web. Uh -huh. And then si Dream Studio. Ang galing, oh. Love that cat. I don't know if all that text will be accepted. And then si Dali. Hello. Yan. I hope you're having fun, no? Following along. If not, ah, yeah, wato. Tinanggap talaga niya. So let's see what happens. Hmm. So you see the if if you're in the mid journey, you know, uh, Discord, you can see it's iterating on first the fuzzy image, and then it makes it more high definition, more high definition, more high definition until you get the final one. 
Oh, nakuha niya pati yung barongs and kimonas as part of the prompt. Ah, okay. Look at this. Uh -huh. Well, that does look like sort of a barong. Pero wala namang ibang traditional Filipino out outfit. And then, yeah, I guess they look sort of Filipino. Filipino-Chinese maybe or Filipino-Japanese. I just think it. No? But I love the background. The background's all neon. Cyberpunk nga, di ba? Wonder what the other generators did. Oh, this one looks, although medyo, medyo weird yung images. This could be album covers. Ito, medyo igorot outfit to. Oh, table diffusion. Actually, you can, you have advanced options on the web. You can be, you can, you know, uh, you can play around with the settings and see what happens. No? Dream Studio. Ah, oh, this one looks, looks even cleaner and cooler, no? Look at that. Oh, to pwedeng album cover. Dolly? Hello? Ah. So you see, iba-iba yung ano nila eh. Iba-iba yung approach. This one looks interesting. The question now is, sino kaya yung artist na rinip off nila <laughs> for to do this? It's always at the back of my mind eh. Oh, I have a question from Josh. Does GPT get info and store data that we feed on it as part of its training set? Okay, actually, that's one of the questions that will emerge later. From what I understand, go back to that. Anything that's still here is live on their, parang their server. Whether they use that to train or not, I'm not sure. My guess is hindi. But in terms of the information, it's stored. And then you're, you can actually now delete a past chat you've done. Or even better, you can share that uh, that chat. So this actually allows you to collaborate with others. Now, ito yung conversation I had with ChatGPT. Here's the link. And then another person will convert that into their own chat. And it will get ano, longer. Okay, sige. What, are, what time is it? We spend about 45 minutes on that. But I think that was fun. Sige, so okay, knowing that, what are the examples of tools that have been generated on that process? The reason why I went through that in some detail, apart from demonstrating it, is so you kind of have an idea of how, how people are now building applications. Because the base application is just the chatbot or the image generator, you can build another application on top of that using APIs, and then it gets interesting. First, um, siempre, what I did was not a comprehensive uh, uh, you know, list of prompts. You might want to check out promptingguide.ai. No? Just uh, check it out. Uh, it's got an overview of best practices in terms of prompting. No? So I think I have it here. Where's that? Just type it na lang. Prompting guide. Yeah, prompting guide AI. Yeah, no? So it tells you how large language models works, some techniques, you know, zero shot, few shot. They try to be technical about it. I, I wouldn't be too caught up in the terms, no? Like, should I do a few shot prompt or a zero shot prompt? I'd be more particular about the kind of the, the thought process. Like for example, itong automatic reasoning and tool use. And they have research papers very recently done on some of these. Uh, given a new task, it selects demonstrations of multi-step reasoning and tool from a task library. So gagawa ka ngayon ng task library and then you run that process. Uh, for me, it's a, it's similar lang to that framework approach where you already um, ano, uh, execute that. Oh, si Karstein, ano to? Ah, may ano ren, image generation si Bing. Yun. Ano to? Bing.com slash create. Yun, mamaya, when I'm on my Edge browser, I'll use that. No? Ano pa? Atong reaction prompting, meron din. So you have a thought process. Uh, basically, you spell out examples of the reaction. And then yung, yung, ano mo, yung last prompt mo is, now given all of the above, please react to this. So in a way, you're, uh, this is known as fine-tuning uh, a language model. So by already providing a framework, you are fine-tuning the, the, ano, the model. So have fun with that. In addition to the deep learning AI course, no? uh, it's just one of the basics I would go through. There's a, this cool website called Why Try AI. Uh, it's really more of a blog. But I like uh, ano, looking at it. Why try AI? Why try AI? Yeah, because it's got tips, especially if you're into mid-journey um, and image generation. You can, be, you know, uh, best mid-journey prompts. And it gives you parang tips already on how to prompt mid-journey. So yeah, exploded. 
it creates these types of ano, uh, prompts. Someone, uh, something as someone, ito, Pac-Man as a giant monster, Harry Potter as a Marvel villain. Ito, maganda tong gawin with the blend command. Upload your photo and then you say, this, this photo as a super villain. And then it could be a new profile photo for you. Intangible concept. So, ano to? Anxiety. Just type the word anxiety. See what happens. Or joy. Or wisdom. Or symmetrical. Flat icon design. One of my favorite ones is, ano eh? Saan ba yun? Uh, isometric. Yan. Isometric is nice. No? It, it becomes like a tile in a game. And wala lang. It's just a cool illustration of, uh, you know, uh, that you can use. No? So, this thing keeps getting updated as we go along. It started in December 2022 and now they're at June 2023. Padami ng padami. So they just keep adding. No? Uh, in addition to that, you can also check out Stable Diffusion Web for prompts. So I like that uh, ano, parang function. Sana si Stable Diffusion? Ito. So this Stable Diffusion, if you go up here, merong search prompts. No? And then you can just search a word that you like. Kunyari, goth. No? And see what other prompts come out that involve some some sort of goth. And then you can do your variation of those prompts. Din mo si Scarlett Johansson, apat yung kamayo. <laughs> so the, that's the effect of sometimes mga distortions. In, ito yung hallucinations of the of the image generation tools naman. But however, it might actually be a cool artwork. No? So this is the word goth. And then you can try it. No? Portrait, photo of a young sexy, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, gawa nga tayo. And then see what happens, though. Ayan na naman. Due to the number of users, the server may experience problems. So, pag ganyan, just keep reloading. Ayan, there you go. Okay. So, I'm now using an existing prompt that I found on the prompt database in Stable Diffusion. Uh, and by the way, if you're also quite happy about your work and you want to share it, you can just click this. So, ayan uh, you can click this, and now this becomes uh, a prompt that can be that can be searched on the prompt database. So that's really cool. Okay, um, crayon. Ah, ito yung ano? Ito yung tinasabi ko sa inyo. This is another AI image generation tool that crayon with an I, no? Crayon.com. It's free. It also has a paid version, pero the free is pretty good. I wonder kung mahuli niya si Scarlett Johansson. Kakaano ko lang. Kaka. This one takes a little bit more time than the others. So I don't know if it's being more deliberate about the about the outcome or it's using an older model. So ano to? Gothic fashion outfit, Rembrandt lighting. Sige, let's let it run and I'll come back to that later. Consensus. If you're into research or looking at papers, I recommend checking out Consensus. So Consensus is like a chat GPT, but for research, meaning it will look for uh, ano, research papers. For example, uh, satellite data predicting dengue outbreaks. Uh, ano na lang? Alam na natin yan eh. Social media. Yan. So you search for that, and it will come up with relatively recent literature. No? So this is not different from, I guess, searching yung mga databases ng, ano, ng, ng mga science direct or you know all these journals. But the nice thing here is uh, the results are pretty good. I actually got this recommendation from, a, from an academic. No? And one of the big challenges of academics is they can't publish fast enough. So I found that meron na, meron na rin palang AI for them. So consensus is there. Ah, chat PDF. I don't know if you've tried this. I recommended this on my social uh, ano, channels quite recently. Let's create a totally new one sa incognito para, para fresh. No? So what chat PDF does is it allows you to converse with your PDF. No? So I'm going to upload a PDF. Um, ano ba ito? Ito. Pabrito ko si Desiderata. Pero wait, I think I have... What, I think this has great applications in... Um, HR, no? So you have a resume. Kunyari to, resume ko. I'm going to upload it. So now it knows my resume. So I would then, ano, interrogate my, uh, this resume using chat PDF, no? And it even suggests a profile already, no? Binigyan ka na ng profile. So I'll say, what are good interview questions for 
Dominic. When interviewing Dominic Ligot, it would be benef beneficial to ask questions that delve into his expertise, uh, especially in data, analytics, ethics, and social impact. Oh, kilalang kilala ako. So, Ayan, can you tell us about a specific project where you applied your skills in analytics and ethics to achieve a positive social impact? Oh, man, I might flunk some of these questions. So, but anyway, the whole point here is a really good way of getting like vetted information, like coming from a PDF and then interrogating it, which is also good for research. So, as I said, this is probably a more, I would say, a more advanced version nung kanina, yung just pasting the text on the chatbot. Siyempre, you can still do that. Pero here, you might want to upload like a PDF document. Or if you're reviewing, kunyari, you got some papers from Consensus and you don't have time to read all of them, upload them here and start asking. And that can already generate, help you generate a, li a literature review for it. Pero ito, sa, sa HR, this I think is fantastic kasi rather than creating generic questions, you can come up with pretty specific questions for a candidate. Or how would you ask Dominic about his strengths and weaknesses? Remember, it's using a large language model. So kubaga, it's, it's actually using its logic engine uh, considering yung, ano, yung text na binigay mo. Here are some ways to ask Dominic. Strengths. What would you say are your key strengths and contributed to your success in the field of data and AI? Ang weaknesses naman, in your journey as a professional, have you encountered any areas where you feel you could have improved? So, ano na siya tailored fit to the, to the profile of the person. So, yun, that's chat PDF. Ah, Dime a Dozen. No? This is an interesting app. More on ano naman to, more on planning. No? So, si Dime a Dozen, I think I already have one here. Na, naka, ano na. Uh, ready na. It's for those who are preparing proposals. No? So, ito, dime a dozen. So, describe your business. ADs is a risk management service type ka natin, that generates risk reports on public health using satellite data, social media, and government statistics, and Weather data. And it generates forecasts of dengue and and predicts hotspots for mosquitoes. And so what if we wanted to turn ADs into a startup, which is incidentally happening now? No? So mumkatanum siya ngayon ng second question. No? Uh, how do you plan to monetize this service? This service can be monetized via grants or local government subscription or one-time consulting fees. Lalang, just out of curiosity. Next, last question. Oh, may email. Ako, hinihingi na yung email ko. Researching. How will ADs acquire and analyze the necessary data through open data, subscriptions, and government statistics? Yan. Dominic, you got at gmail.com. Generate report. Actually, there are many uh, parang AI that are like this where mm -hmm. they're generating, helping you generate mga reports na. No? So, oh yeah, no? it gives you your business overview, viability. I mean, it's I wouldn't necessarily take it at face value. Siyempre, it's something you should generate. But imagine if you were looking to pitch to an investor it has a lot of info already. Market size, revenue potential. Galing, no? Pati mga statistics. I have to double check this. No? According to a report by Grandview, the global risk management market size was valued at $12 billion. Okay? Wouldn't mind getting some of that. Business overview. This is the problem. Let's zoom in. No? This is the solution. Oh, pati nga, our eureka moment. So pag nakita nyo yung I post something that uses our eureka moment, alam nyo na kung saan galing yun, no? Business model, team, financials, monetization strategy. Ah, sige. Hanggang dito, it's free. Beyond that, you pay, what, $39? Which, in the grand scheme of things, isn't really that expensive compared to hiring uh, a business analyst to write all of this down. So that's dime a dozen. And actually, there are many ano, parang AI that are like this. No? Another one is venture, venture AI. No? Ventures AI. Ito naman, similar to Dime a Dozen, it's also a business strategy 
thing. No? I won't generate that from scratch anymore. I'll just show you the, the output. So ganyan. we have a service that generates risk reports from Dengue. Uh, we generate these from social listing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then ito na yung idea. Industry insight, SWOT analysis, may PESTEL pa siyang nalalaman, target audience. And this is from like a two or three sentence prompt. Ah. Inisip na niya, okay, ito siguro yung gusto mong gawin. So as a, if you're a business analyst or you know a desk uh, analyst, you can now use this uh, parang outline and fill in the blanks. Imagine how much, uh, what do you call this, productivity you could generate. No? Well, meron pang five forces analysis supporter. That's a pretty cool. Ano? And this is the free version. No? I ko lang narinig to. Cat Woe Analysis. Customers, actions, transformation, worldview, owner, environment. And then there is uh, the paid version. You can have more details like unique selling point, go-to-market strategy, financial analysis. They even recommend books. So data-driven healthcare, public health informatics. Okay. So if you're really like uh, a business uh, owner or a uh, business head and you want to get deeper, like you, you, you're like sitting in a new job and it's a slightly different industry from what you remember, you already have an AI assistant that can that can uh, no, that can come up with something no? okay next learning studio ai ah this is for teachers and basically anyone who wants to do training no so what is it learningstudioai.com no it basically creates a totally original training course based on a prompt learning studio yeah so kunyari gawa tayo ng course enter the subject that you want to do hmm how to navigate online dating and relationships. <laughs> Go tayo ng course. We're creating your course. Why not grab a coffee? Takes 90 seconds. Sige, while we're waiting for that, balikan natin si Crayon. Ayan! Look at that Scarlett Johansson treatment, no? I would say that's above average. Medyo duling-duling lang siya in some of the takes. Sinabi naman natin yung Scarlett Johansson latex gothic fashion outfit Rembrandt lighting. Oh, okay, oh. Medyo ano lang sa dito, banlag. But otherwise, I wouldn't mind using this for some artwork. Ang tanong lang is, is Scarlett Johansson's face copyrighted? Yan siguro ang magandang tanong. Okay, balikan natin si Learning Studio AI. No? Um, The last example, and by the way, we're already at the hour. So hopefully you're still sticking around. Sabado naman. Si God Mode. Ano tong God Mode? So there was uh there is a a GPT called Auto GPT that was created. Basically it's a a GPT that prompts itself. But you have to download it no from GitHub. So God mode somebody decided to just host it. You can do it online no. So punta natin si God mode. So kay God mode ano ano bang difference nito nung ano nung AI na to. This is an AI that it does already what you want it to do. So sabi ko, I have a design thinking program. I want to launch an online marketing campaign for it to attract participants. And then sinasagot na niya na, okay, before uh, determining next command, I need to understand the target audience. And then can I Google that audience? And then you can just approve the plan. No? Okay, approve. Okay, Google it. Intindihin na niya kung sino yung pwedeng target audience for like this training that I want to, ano, to launch. No? And sunod-sunod na siya. Or you can give it like a series of commands and then gagawin na niya. So for me, this is both simultaneously impressive and really disturbing. Kasi literally, ano na siya, independent, ano, independent uh, AI na siya. So sabi niya, based on the Google results, I can see identifying the target audience involves analyzing data, blah, blah, blah. I need to organize my thoughts. Okay. So ito na yung commands, no? You can actually create this parang series of commands on a YAML file. Upload it and gagawin na niya. Sige, I'll approve that plan. Ayoko lang masyadong paglaroan because I don't know how far it will go. Kasi nga, ito nga yung sinasabi nilang danger of, of AI. Kasi if you give it permission to do everything, baka mamaya it might end up applying for, I don't know, a gun license no? and start buying guns online. Mga ganyan eh. Ito yung pinakita nila uh, on, on a YouTube video where the chatbot basically created another chatbot that ordered pizza. That was an interesting demo. So yeah, no? So if you want to play with really kind of as close as it gets no, to 
I wouldn't call it AGI yet, but independent AI that comes up with its own original ideas to do something just based on a general command. That's where you go. And then one more. So what if you don't know if there's an AI for something? Well, there's actually an AI that will find you other AI. It's called there's an AI for that. And magandang pang sagot to dun sa mga ibang tanong uh, kanina uh, that came in through the registration. No? So asa na siya? There's an AI for that. Yan. So what if I wanted to find an AI for dating and relationships? Just to be consistent dun sa request natin kanina. Oh my gosh, ang dami oh. Loveliness, Deeper, Keeper, Dates AI, Flame AI. Ang dami oh. Look at that. No? I think as of now, there are how many? Uh, at least 5,000 yata. Ande. Ayan, 5,000 AIs for 1,467 tasks. And the tasks are really amazing. Create an, uh, Use an AI to create a website. Use a, an AI to do this, to do that. So just dive in. No? Balik tayo dun sa learning ano natin, course natin. Ayan. Isa. This one. Navigating online dating and relationships. Master the art of online dating and build successful relationships in the digital age. Oh. Overview. This is the course. Oh, step one. Creating an attractive online profile. Oh, choose the right photos, crafting a bio, blah, blah, blah. Next. Effective communication and building connections. Tama naman. If you want to do dating, you have to learn how to talk. So the art of conversation, online etiquette, blah, blah, blah. Finally, navigating challenges and maintaining healthy relationships. Wow, I might need to take that course. Red flags and deal breakers, managing distance relationships, online and offline interactions. And ang masaya dyan, there's a quiz. <laughs> you can take a quiz on, ano, on relationships. Ayan, no? What is an essential element to consider when choosing photos for your online dating profile? Oh. Diba, we just waited 90 seconds and you now have an online course which you, which you can now monetize or upload in Coursera if you want. Or you can start your own learning management system on dating. Congratulations on completing this course. So this is the question. Eh? Diba? One of the questions that was asked to me is how will the education sector deal with AI? Well, lesson plans are already here. Now, of course, you don't take all of this lock, stock, and barrel. Pared. As I mentioned, because uh, we just did a blind prompt. You have to verify if all of this information is uh, accurate, your knowledge. But can you imagine the amount of time you save no, with all of this stuff? Really, you know, really mind-blowing. No? Okay. So, yeah, so we have about a few minutes left, although we can always extend. I want to kind of put everyone's brain no, in the right places. You've seen all of the, the power of these applications. You've seen... What's possible? Actually, we haven't even scratched the surface. We just, I just gave you a few things to play with. Um, how do you use this stuff? So when you Google uh, use cases, that's how they refer to it. Kanya kanyang ano banat yan by each analyst. And the first thing I want to I think encourage is don't rely on the analysts too much. Mga industry analysts like Gartner because they're guessing just as much as you and I are. I would encourage you guys to prospect on your own what kind of use cases are available. Uh, so let's start step by step now in terms of the thought process. First is let's be very deliberate now and differentiate builder and user. Because uh, for the longest time, people who have been using AI are the builders, you know, data scientists, engineers, academics. They're the ones who know the math. They, they're the ones who know the code. They will still be in demand. Don't worry if that's one of you. But you now need to think of how do I build better applications for the users? And then the user naman, on the right-hand side, these are people who don't necessarily need to know the math or the programming, although it doesn't hurt if you do. But it's more about thinking and speculating about how would you use these kinds of tools to make your life more efficient and more importantly, make it impactful. So impact talaga nakakatalo. I mean, impact is the most important part. So in Serolytics, we actually have a, a four-box framework, no, which I'm happy to share. On any time we meet a client, what are the four things in our mind? Number one, does the client already know what they want? So brainstorming is a massive opportunity. So I showed you earlier, Dime a Dozen, Ventures AI, even just you know speculating on the plot and the theme of a particular story. That's actually useful at brainstorm already. 
Kasi tell you what, in any corporate environment, people are probably operating at maybe 30% of their capacity. Because most of the time, they're dealing with admin, they're dealing with office politics, so the ability to brainstorm effectively. Kaya nga, pag mga planning session, normally, you bring them out of the office. Kasi if they're in the office, their their brains get locked. But with the with the power of AI, you could shortcut that. So even if you're doing your day-to-day stuff, you have AI on the right-hand side generating ideas for you. Then you do research. So you have apps like Consensus and these uh, search engines. You can now research how many how many ways has this problem been researched before and then see if you can either adopt it or do something completely new. But the, the rubber hits the road with the action plan. Yeah, you have God mode eh, no? and other apps. No? Uh, even ChatGPT can give you an action plan. No? What interventions do we need to do because we now know what idea we want to solve. We now have research. What's the action plan? Maybe the action plan is create a training course to educate our staff about blah, blah, blah. And then you, know, you have a learning studio application that can create that learning course for you. And then you launch the training course and then you monitor. You know, And this doesn't necessarily need AI anymore. You just count how many people sign up, uh, you know, how many people completed the course, how many people are putting the course into action. And then you go back to the original idea no, and see if you solve that problem. It's literally that straightforward. But you know, I have to say, if you're you know in an office, if you're doing day to day, it's hard to compartmentalize your brain. And that's why AI for me is that other parang other brain. No? In the same way, na you know, in, in neuroscience, kiwale yung decision making ng brain, dun sa knowledge. The neocortex does the knowledge part. But if you're always just using the neocortex, yung analysis paralysis is the problem. That's why it happens because that part of your brain that does the knowledge part, the analysis, the logic, it doesn't make decisions. The decision is still the, the more primitive uh, no, limbic system. And yon that just takes instinct and emotion. So irrespective of what the neocortex knows or does not know, it will make decisions. Kaya nga, you don't even need to know everything to make a decision. And then on the opposite side, you have people who know quite a lot of things, but they can't decide. That actually also is a clue of how we probably could manage AI safety. Because we're all afraid that these AI will be more intelligent than humans and start killing humans. We have to always remember, even humans don't combine knowledge and decision-making in one bucket. So it is theoretically feasible, I mean, as a concept, to create very intelligent AI, but not empower it to kill us. Kiwala yung decision-making uh, ability. Kaya, kaya, kaya even dun sa God mode, it asks your permission, which I found useful. So where would AI really come in talaga? No? And I, I'm finding this shorthand quite useful. I, I talked about this in the job, uh, the jobs ano, uh, episode. No? In any task or mission you have, try to see if you can measure the uncertainty and the complexity. Uncertainty means... Does, is it obvious what you need to do? Kasi pwede namang it's not obvious. Sometimes you don't know what to do. Uh, so that's high uncertainty. If you know what to do, then that's low uncertainty. That's a certain you know, task. Then complexity is how, many, how much information do you need to consider before you come to a decision? So if it's small lang, low. If it's uh, a lot, then it's high. So if it's a low complexity and a relatively certain outcome, automation talaga yan. Automated. Kasi nga, you only need to consider a few inputs and it's only one of maybe three options that you need to decide on. AI can do that already. On the other hand, if it's even if you have a small amount of information but you don't know what the actions are, then certainly you still need humans in that decision uh, because humans have experience, instinct. So don't, be, don't, don't hesitate to give it to humans. The problem is we're also giving this low-level task to humans this is hard, no? Uh, it's a waste. I think it's a waste of humanity. Like my favorite example to hit on is the elevator person. Sa makita mo sa mall, tagapindot lang siya ng button. I mean, literally, one decision, variable lang siya, and one output. Bakit tao pa yung gumagawa nun? Because it's a job, right? Those are the jobs that are risk, uh, at risk. Yung mga low, ano, low complexity and low uncertainty. <coughs> Sorry. Now the fun part. What if it's a high high complexity? <clears throat> uh, uh, <clears throat> Give me a second and just get water. <clears throat> uh, 
okay, better. If it's a high complexity task, but the outcome is still kind of straightforward, that's where analytics th uh, really thrives now. For example, um, assessing a borrower for credit worthiness. Perfect, uh, perfect use case for uh, credit scoring. In some banks, it's an automatic decision. In other banks, there's a credit score and then an, an analyst makes the call. Now. So yeah, that's a good task. But here's, here's, I think, where the contention is, what if it's a high uncertainty and high complexity job? And right now, humans are doing that, using analytics then, but they're very inefficient. I think this is where you should let the AI run loose, but then you establish guardrails. An example of this that I mentioned before is yung alpha fold, if you remember that, no? yung drug discovery. If you let humans do the protein folding uh, speculation, it's going to take forever, even if you have machine learning. So what DeepMind did, they created AlphaFold, which is a reinforcement learning algorithm. It's the algorithm they use to create AlphaGo and mga chess AI. And those uh, machine learning algorithms are capable of exploring parang a, a decision space, they call it, far more efficiently than humans. Like si AlphaGo, the, the AI that beat Lee Sedol, it didn't learn uh, Go from watching old Go games. What it did was it played against itself. So it was capable of training itself no, in playing Go. And after a certain level, it got better than humans na. So kumbaga, super intelligent na siya in that particular task. So it is possible to create artificial super intelligence in a narrow domain. No? I think the, the mission kasi of Google DeepMind and these other companies is they want to create a general AI that's smarter than humans in a broad series of domains. And if you saw all of the applications we were playing with earlier, it's getting there. No? But we should not be scared. Kasi decision making is still left to humans. I think the, the problem arises when you automate decisions. So actually... Parang thinking about AI safety, it's actually automation safety that's the problem. Because you can automate a stupid thing eh, and it will, it will efficiently do stupid things. No? You don't even need AI for that. That can be unsafe. But if you have AI and you automate it and you don't equip it with guardrails, and that's where the alignment problem comes in. No? It's hard to kind of address that. So, sige. this is AI, this is analytics, etc. What about use cases naman? One approach I would recommend is if you're speculating on where AI can, can play a role, decide what kinds of AI you want to uh, look at. Because AI is a broad series of things. For example, this is a common shorthand that we use when, when we run workshops. No? Uh, think of four areas of practice. And uh, the easiest four are obviously data analytics, computer vision, language processing, and automation. These are for, I would say, 95% of potentially any AI activity, itong apat na to. There, there could be some niche cases, of course. No? Or maybe there are combinations. Like yung, I don't know what it was, Google Lens ata, where you take a photo of an image with text on it, and then it will automatically translate the words in the text. So that's a co combination of computer vision and natural language processing. Okay, so you got this technology-wise, no? Now you need a way of, in a way, uh, you need a taxonomy of business challenges. Marami yan. You, you, there, you can just you know, get any business book. One of the uh, best examples that I, uh, that I frequently use since I came from a risk management discipline is a uh, firm. No? I don't know if you remember this. This comes from ISO 31000. Firm mm -hmm. means financial, infrastructure, reputational, and marketplace. The reason why I like firm is from my office days, this is basically a hundred percent of anything the boss wanted to talk about. But in the pero from time to time it changes now. The bosses are worried about money, and money can be revenue, cost, losses, or capital. If you're if you come from an accounting background, you'll know that by heart. It can be infra. Infra is not just machines, it's basically your ability to produce results. So your processes, quality, productivity, asset management. It can be reputational. 
meaning uh, marketing, your brand, uh, if there's a, a scandal, crisis management, there's this emerging a term called ESG, Environmental, Social, and Governance, which is also a brand issue. And then marketplace. So marketplace is different from mar marketing. Mar marketplace is actually closer to sales. No? How to acquire customers, how to retain them, are we pricing properly? Are we developing better products? So in any company, even NGOs kind of think of it this way. Hindi lang sila for profit, but they definitely need to raise money from grants and they need to be efficient about their operations. So for me, I, I, when, when I first encountered firm, because I used to teach, uh, actually I still do, but not as much. I used to teach uh, enterprise risk management. This is one of the best frameworks. So if you're armed with firm and you're armed with these four, what do you do? You talk to the chat GPT. Can you give me ideas on how I can apply data visualization for finance or data visualization for reputation management or computer vision for infrastructure? Diba? That should give you a thought starter. So you now have a framework where you can start. This is great for planning. This is great for strategy. And I already did that no, as an example. No? You don't have to read everything here. No? And maybe just take a screenshot or as a video later. If you have AI and you have a framework and you have technologies, generating all of these ideas is just one click. No? Now the question is, once you've generated the ideas, where do you go? So the only thing missing here, there's two things missing here. Is one is the operational plan. How do you, let's do a bingo. Uh, ito, infrastructure and NLP. Analyze text data from customer complaints or feedback to identify common issues and improve productivity by addressing recurring problems in infrastructure services. So it's a very high level strategy. Now you need to generate the operational plan. And then maybe you now need to translate it to whatever industry you're working for. Are you in a bank? Are you in a telco? Diba? Pero I, I can tell you this, this looks pretty straightforward, but in companies, they really, they really struggle with this. Either because they're too busy, or you you know they're not exposed kasi to they're exposed kasi too much to the day to day. It takes a different type of parang brain space and uh, environment to just sit back and start thinking out loud. What can we do to uh, come up with use cases for technologies? You know, out of uh, curiosity, you might be interested to hear this is similar, not exactly like this, but this is similar to a process that we use in you know, my companies. You know? This is the process we use to come up with Project ADs. This is the process we use to come up with Project Sparta. This is the process we use to win the NASA challenge three times. No? People don't remember that anymore. And it's not a matter of flexing, but you can be really productive doing this. And if, especially if you're armed now with data. Because before AI, we had analytics, we had databases. But even more so now that you don't even need a database. You can just use AI to generate that data for you. And then AI can automate the action. Give me a learning plan. Give me an operational plan. Give me images. I mean, I'd be surprised if you couldn't come up with a PowerPoint presentation. You don't even need to use PowerPoint anymore. There's actually an AI that creates slides for you. So if you need to sell the idea to a colleague, to your boss, to an investor, there's no excuse not to do it, is my, is my point. All right, sige, looking forward na ngayon. So uh, before we jump to Q&A, as I'm sure you have a lot of questions, hopefully, can I ask, uh, anyway, those who want to get a copy of the slides, you know what to do. Uh, Bitly AI for Lunch Tools, please give me as much feedback as you, you uh, humanly can and indicate your email para I can send it to you. I'm sure you'll find this uh, slide deck useful. And then we are now done with three out of the four topics. So yung huli na lang is art, copyright, and education. Pretty much the loser from LinkedIn and Twitter. But I think it's the most interesting sa totoo lang. Kasi this deals with kind of the, the near-term problems we're encountering now. Like students cheating on essays, artists getting ripped off. We need to talk about that and what does it mean no? uh, you know, to live in a world where copyright is kind of so fluid. Um, Hopefully, you've already subscribed to YouTube. I've been doing four, as of now, four webinars. And it looks like from the trend, we won't stop at episode four. There'll be more. And I got some suggestions from people to include a guest. So, tamantama, after next episode, 
uh, I'll be done with the preliminary material. I encourage you to look back and see uh, the other discussions we've had on jobs, on ethics, the general discussion in epi uh, episode zero. And then uh, just kicking it up a notch. Maybe you or your company need a more targeted briefing, which I'm happy to provide. No, We can just talk about it separately. I just did one yesterday in Globe Telecom. It went, went very well. Their, their CEO was there, see, uh, Mr. Ernest Koo. I love the crowd at Globe. Uh, quite youthful, energetic, very techy. They're kind of like probably our version of Google or Apple. No? And, and I'm happy to see companies like that. Because uh, the, the vast majority of companies I meet talagang, ano, really backward. And it's because we're really at the, the tail end of innovation. And my, my mission is really to bring everyone up to speed. I've also been appearing in the media. These are uh, completely sila ang nagyaya. No? And sana magyaya pa sila. Love Aniver was a blast. I hope I make it uh, in another episode. No? And then this is an early announcement. Pero since you're in the webinar, uh, uh, you're, you're the first to hear. So my company, Serolytics, so, so my initiative to do these webinars is on a personal basis, but my company will be launching uh, you know, a pioneering program to basically help companies design use cases for AI. No? So uh, anyway, if you want early uh, dibs on that material, just email them at support at serolytics.com. The idea here is uh, if you have a design process, you want to launch a product, you want to do a business strategy, you want to do a new startup, how can AI help you? Actually, some of the discussions I had in this webinar uh, were, were from the workshop materials. No? So if you're, if you're curious about that, please, uh, please uh, contact them. And then uh, this is my customary invitation. Please follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, basically anywhere you want to be. Um, and, uh, and I also have been uploading videos on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So please, ano, please uh, check it out. And now we go to the Q&A. No? Um, somebody's asking for the evaluation link form. I'm just going to paste it here on the, on the bottom. But in the meantime, does anyone have questions? Ito, may tanong si Josh. Do you know of any platform or university which offers a comprehensive AI curriculum? No. <laughs> okay, so again, to be very honest, most of the university programs, I can think of two right now. There's a, there's one in UP, and of course you have the the MSDS uh, type courses, AIM, De La Salle, UST just launched one. Uh, then there's the Ateneo is more of data engineering, I think, and then you have UANP, which I co-authored. That's more business analytics. Usually, uh, well, number one. They're not necessarily, with the exception of UP, they're really tailored for business analytics, not really AI. But they do talk about AI as a technology, but not the technology. So I think it's early days for the university courses about AI. So if you take them, you'll probably be trained to become a builder of AI. But to my knowledge, no one is teaching people how to be a user of AI, which I think is uh, the, the, the name of the game now. No? And... To be honest, there's a far bigger population of people who are in non-data jobs, like marketing people, finance people, operations people, HR people, who could immediately uh, benefit uh, from AI. So I'm pasting the form link here. Bitly AI for lunch tools. So please click that. So again, anyone else? Any question? I had actually had a few questions from the the registration no? <clears throat> what are ai tools for image and video then let's use ai to ask so i mentioned kanina limana no there was mid journey there was dolly there was stable diffusion there was crayon and there was dream studio no uh tingnan natin kung may nakalista uh, dito sa ano there is there an ai for that ano ba yun? Is there an AI? Is there an AI for that? That call. Yeah. Kaya magandang ano eh? Magandang uh, to have that link. Kasi nga if if you're searching for a tool, hala ayo na. Ata na. If you're searching for a tool that uh, particularly for a particular task, and you should you should just use those search engines, no, to to figure it out. 
Okay, mm-hmm. while that's loading, let's tackle the next another question. Uh, faster, cheaper way to stitch drone images and georeference GPS heat maps. Uh, top of my mind, I don't know if there's a tool, pero mame, let's search it also. Sa, is there an AI for that? AI for education. Well, you saw already Learning Studio earlier. I think there could be more. And basically, it's there to automate and consensus for research. I think these are tip of the iceberg. I'm sure there will be AI embedded into LMS eventually, my learning management systems. So yun yung, ano, yun yung interesting. Okay, there is a question here from Jogar. Is there a plan to include an AI-focused pathway under Sparta? Well, Sparta is no longer, I'm no longer in the planning uh, committee of Sparta. No? Uh, from what I understand, yung Sparta, well, as it stands now, that's pretty much it. But there may be a new AI curriculum created by either DAP or DOST. Uh, I, certainly, AAP is also interested in it, but it's still early days. So, baka mauna pa nga ako as, my, as Doc Ligo to launch one. So, but as far as part is concerned, from my understanding, wala. Josh, in the four main areas of AI... RPA, NLP, which one falls into generative? All of them can fall into generative. So yung kanina, let's jump back to that slide. These are practice areas. Now, whether you use generative or uh, discriminative AI, uh, you can use both. Like for example, a chatbot. You can use a chatbot in a generative manner to answer questions, but you can also use chatbot to evaluate the yung kausap mo. So kukunin niya yung mga answers and also come up with a score. So you can be both generative and, uh, and discriminative AI. Same then with computer vision. You can use computer vision to generate pictures of new pictures of anything, uh, not just the fun stuff like cats and dogs, but you can also use it to generate, for example, um, one area in risk management, for example, that's under serviced is creating synthetic data. Kasi nga, the issue is privacy, diba? You can't uh, compromise private information. So what you do is you let an AI generate fake examples of clients or fake examples of situations which have the same distribution as the original data, but you cannot identify who the person is. So that concept is called differential privacy. I might talk about that in another webinar. But I think that's a, that's a good way of getting around this problem between you know, uh, you know, privacy uh, practitioners and analytics. Sila usually mukaaway. O si Agile Geek, merong AI Cyclopedia, GPTE AI, and FutureAILab.com. No? Ano yan? Are these like ano, mga listahan of ano, mga AI tools then like uh, I showed earlier na ayaw na mag-load for some reason? Uh, anyway, sige. Let's go to the, the next question. I think we had a couple of ones. Um, okay. Based on the current proven abilities of all AI, what has the most potential to help the human race? <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for the human race. But as far as I'm concerned, for me and people I work with, uh, AI has already impacted our ability to plan, impacted our ability to create content, impacted our ability to be uh, to create ideas and products for customers and clients. And for me, that's really the source of innovation. Eh? If you can ideate efficiently, Kasi ang dami ng tao who can execute sa totoo lang. No? If you go around, there are many vendors who teach, uh, who, who do implementation. The bottleneck as I see it is always, you, people don't know what they want to do. It's not because they really don't know, but maybe they're too busy. And I think AI can really crack that bottle and you know let the genie out. Now, the other part is how do you protect a society from bad ideas? And I think AI is also the... Ano, the, the tool for that. Oh, we have a comment here. Kanina to. Ah, kay Dean. Of these four AI practice areas, I think natural language processing holds the greatest potential. In particular, to alleviate the abysmal state of education, I will really use that word, Dean. Abysmal talaga. As in, I mean, to segue lang. Uh, I made this comment when I spoke uh, to the Canadian Chamber just recently. If you think of schools as having two functions, no? knowledge production and labor production, Produce more workers and produce knowledge. Bokya na pareho eh. And I'm also speaking as a member of the academia. No? On the labor production, 
students are cheating their way through essays. Just call a spade a spade. No? Kahit na iban mo yan, hindi. Kasi students already use other students to cheat their way. There are, there's a black market of people doing essays. And people are willing to pay. The reason for that is, school is no longer a place to learn. It's a place to just get a diploma because it's required to get a job. So it's a very compliance-driven culture for both the teacher and the student. And that's, it's been that way for nearly probably a century. It's going to be hard to undo that. So sa labor production, bokeyana. And the other half pa is, if you really want to make money agad, you can already do that even without a diploma. If you do web development, content creation, if you do freelancing, copywriting, some of, a lot of those skills can be learned outside the, outside the classroom. Or even AI can teach you that. So ano na yung role ng school sa labor production? Diba? Diminished. Then on the knowledge production, um, yeah, we can't produce research fast enough and the quality of the research can, can use some help. And it's because uh, PhDs and professors are too busy doing admin to do papers. Pero pagdating naman sa papers, they're also graded on where do you publish, uh, how many papers do you produce, what's your age index, mga ganyang bagay. Fortunately, I'm not a professor. So I don't have that pressure. But we do publish research. But for me, I to already told my team, I'm, I'm not, I don't really care about age index. I don't care about Scopus journals. I don't care about state of the art. I care about sharing ideas. So this webinar series could have been a paper, but I'd rather just put it on YouTube so people can learn from it. Because that's me. No? I'm not pressured as much as they are. But we really need our professors to be assisted in that domain. Otherwise, wala, bokya ulit. No? So that's a problem, abysmal. So what we are looking at is a chat GPT, basically an agent that is potentially present in the pocket of any Filipino. Tama, that's a good idea. And the dialects. There is actually a company that I was really looking forward to hear from, si Senti, no? si Ralph Regalado. This is their business from day one. Maybe they're working on something. But we now need to create like a localized chat GPT, no? whatever it takes. Uh, we cannot underestimate the huge potential uh, popularizing this technology among students. It's like the second coming of the Thomasites. Oh, nga naman, si Thomas Aquinas, no? the original uh, researcher. So I, I think it's also connected to digital divide. So people who are not accessing the internet, medyo, we have to do something about that. So Josh, we're heavy users of RPA along with digital transformation using Microsoft. So see Microsoft, because they are partnered with OpenAI, I'm really looking forward to their output. What they can do is actually bring AI directly into enterprise. No? Kasi nga, marami na mga enterprises are already on Azure. Pero, I, syempre, that will deal with the big companies. For the smaller companies, for the startups, you can be more flexible. Kasi nga, cost is an issue. And I'm telling you, all of the tools I used earlier, with a few exceptions, either cost so much, so small, or are free. So, bakit? Yeah, thanks, Josh. Bing speaks Tagalog. Yeah, tama naman. Okay, sige. I think we're nearly, we're past time na. No? I'll just brush through some of the last few questions and then we can call it a day. No? I hope this format works better. No? Hindi tayo ganang kagahol sa Friday. No? What do you think are the priority sectors that needs AI in our country? Everything. <laughs> um, if I were to select education, number one, Number two, transportation. And maybe number three would be economic planning. It's just, I don't know. I don't want to say anything here. Uh, you know, that might torpedo my, ano, my, my, ano, my, my podcast. No? But it seems like we can do much better in terms of planning. And you can see already AI can help with that. So I hope uh, we bring it there. Transportation is a data problem. Sa totoo lang, no? why, why are we not measuring volume of cars? Why are we not measuring, you know, uh, traffic. Uh, you have apps like Waze that have already showed you how to do that. Why aren't we doing that? Maybe they're doing that, but it doesn't seem like it's translating into anything. Uh, so I think transport. And yun, ginawa agad ng tao yun eh. You already have bikers attacking SUVs <laughs> because of how bad the traffic is. The whole problem isn't bikes or SUVs. The problem is mass transport. Mm -hmm. problema yun na. Okay. Oh, my 404 with the link. Let me check if the link is up or down. Bitly AI for launch tools. Kanina gumagana. <clears throat> Ito na lang. I'll, put, I'll paste the raw link here. 
Yan. And the original link is ah uh, uh, yeah you have you have to it's a uh, tawag dito case sensitive unfortunately so capital A I number four capital L launch and then capital T tools yeah that should work okay a few more questions sana you're not bored yet uh since some of the questions are interesting what do you think is the current maturity level of Philippine organizations zero no mga one because they, I think by and large, most people have heard of AI. Like I'm sure most of you have. But I'm sure most of you have not seen, with a few exceptions, how far AI could go. Kasi nga, sanay tayo treating AI as this esoteric technology that you need PhDs to run. Not anymore. Anyone can do it. Yun nga lang, uh, you know, it's just the guts to try it out. No? And make sure you're also balancing the, the privacy aspect of it. What are the risks of using AI in finance, uh, such as credit scoring and fraud prevention? I don't see any necessarily any risks. It's really more about what part of the finance, uh, I don't know, process you put it in. I think, uh, when banking, oh, look, look, one of the biggest problems, uh, I, I worked in banking for more than a decade, uh, is the underserved banking market. And the reason for that is banks can't quali quantify their credit uh, risk because it's just data. That's pretty much a good use case for AI. You, know? you can use AI to gather data, generate synthetic data, and look for new ways to structure products. Hirap na hirap talaga yung mga banko with that because nga, they're, they're stuck with traditional stru structured data systems. No? Okay, nice. Uh, okay, here's the last one. Cybersecurity risks. Well, number one, make sure that you're using an AI tool that's vetted. Lalo na if it's the lesser known ones, baka it's a phishing tool pala by a hacker. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, don't don't input AI into any AI tool unless you're absolutely sure about it. Any information that you wouldn't want to get leaked. So that's why I I keep my queries relatively relatively at the common uh, common noun level. Uh, yung gayahin si Samsung. You know the engineers put in proprietary code, proprietary data. And then you na nagleak na siya. But according to OpenAI, they were able to fix that problem. So according to them, whatever you put in your chat, even if it's live, will only be visible by you unless you share the link. All right. So that's it. So we did prompting. We took, looked at a lot of cool tools. I hope you found them nice. And then I gave you a thought process uh, for use cases in business. And uh, hopefully you share this and follow me on social media. So that's it, episode three. So we will do the next episode next Saturday ulit. No, make, a, make a note of it. In the meantime, thank you very much. Oh, si Agile Geek. I plug natin. No? I've curated a lot of AI resources. Here's a link. Yeah, tingnan nga natin. So I love that the community is very, parang ano, very, uh, very enthusiastic about sharing materials. No? So yan dami. Oh. Okay, Agile Geek. Sige, so please follow Agile Geek then no, on Facebook. We have a group actually uh, on, on Facebook. In the meantime, sige, thank you very much. And that's been episode three. I'll see you next Saturday. In the meantime, have a good weekend. And use AI for good. Thank you very much.